Welcome to Worship with Holy Trinity. My name is Pastor Casey and I'm glad that you are here. A few announcements. Today, Sunday, November 22nd, is the last day to drop off Christmas cards for deployed military personnel. There's a box at the top of the steps by Fellowship Hall for your cards. Next to that box, there are the boxes for the weekly non-perishable food collection for Chester Eastside. You can drop off your cards and your items until 2 p.m. today. We continue delivering meals to local families twice a month, and there are a variety of ways that you can help with this ministry. If you like to cook, you can prepare meals, or uh, if you don't like to cook, you can deliver meals. We are also working towards a goal of preparing 50 meals for Caring for Friends by December 6th. So even just a few meals will help us reach our goal. Please be in touch with Marge Troyan to get involved with this ministry. Our angel tree is filling up. We are providing Christmas gifts for 10 families at the Wesley House. Uh, as of Thursday morning, 75% of the slots have been filled, but there are an additional 32 gifts awaiting for your sign up. This is an opportunity to share God's love and the joy of Christmas with our neighbors. Be on the lookout for more opportunities to love our neighbors, to experience God's presence among us, and to be the church in our community in the next few weeks. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, so get your Advent wreaths ready as we prepare for Jesus. My prayer is with you, that you would experience God's presence in your life today and throughout the week. Remember that you are indeed loved. We join together in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, 
we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. And I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scatter them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that... With the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom, prepared from, for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, When was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? 
And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for you, for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Today in the church calendar, it's the last Sunday of the year. The church calendar always ends with Christ the King Sunday. When I think about a king, I think about someone wearing a gold crown, having an abundance of power and overflowing with money. I think about a rule maker in terms like your highness and your majesty. But have you ever imagined a king to be someone who is homeless or in a jail cell? Have you ever imagined a king being hungry or parched from thirst? This morning in our gospel, we hear Jesus telling a story to the disciples that when the Son of Man returns, he will separate people based upon how they treated others. Those who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, cared for the sick, and visited the imprisoned, and those who did not. There's been a lot of words and ink spilled on saying that this story is about judgment, and people going to heaven or hell, but frankly, there's far more going on here than the surface level reading of the text. What's interesting to me is those who fed, clothed, cared for, and visited didn't notice Jesus just as much as those who didn't care for their neighbors. Neither group in this story recognized or anticipated Jesus, the Son of Man, being in need of food, clothes, sick, or in jail. Those who cared for their neighbors were simply being nice, and those who didn't, well, they just didn't care for their neighbors. Just as how we have a way of imagining a king, the majority of people think about God as powerful and mighty and without need. But what we hear from Jesus this morning is that the one who sits on the throne surrounded by angels is the same one who dwells with those who are overcome with need and dependent on others. What we hear from Jesus is that he is in and with those who are suffering and in need. So if we yearn to experience God's presence fully, then we look to the people and places with the most suffering, even those places and pieces within ourselves. The creator of the universe, the one born of Mary, the one who suffered, died, and rose again does not simply invite us into the royal palaces of prestige and power and cathedrals that are lined with marble and gold. Rather, we are invited to encounter the living Lord in homeless shelters, food pantries, and prisons. We will be encountered by the living Lord in refugee camps, hospitals, tent cities, and AA meetings. And it's not just other people and places outside of ourselves, but within each of us. Within each of us, there are pieces of ourselves and stories of our lives that we hide, that we at one time or another would fear public shame if they were told or put on display. But those are the places where we are encountered by the living Lord. Those are the places where Jesus dwells. See, the author of all life says, you, the vulnerable and broken you, I dwell with you. The vulnerable and broken people we look over at or at times look down upon, God dwells within them. The people 2,000 years ago, they expected the Messiah to show up like a king of social royalty, ruling with power and authority of the world. But Jesus showed up as a homeless refugee baby, born to an unwed mother, 
who rather than wearing a crown of gold, wore a crown of thorns, and instead of being revered and honored for his teaching, wisdom, and authority, he was murdered. And it's important that we recognize these truths. It's important to recognize these details because they have often been overlooked in order to make God fit into our boxes, to make people comfortable, and to fit our expectations. Even now, after knowing the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and learning the stories of who Jesus was and what Jesus cared about and what Jesus taught, we can still forget where he told us that he would show up and yet we cling to our expectations. But if we can let go of our expectations, if we can let go of the social norms, all of those norms that we've grown accustomed to, we will be encountered by Jesus and the needs of our neighbors and the depths of our beings. See, Christ the King is revealed not in power, but in vulnerability, not in might, but brokenness, not in judgment, but grace, not in pomp and circumstance, but in the ordinary people and places of life, in the waters of baptism, in bread broken and wine poured, in our neighbors and in our very beings. Where would you least expect to be encountered by Jesus? I suspect that's exactly where Jesus is inviting you and promises to show up. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and bring out your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Heal the sinful divisions we create between us and release us from systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Pour out the gifts of your Spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Thank you for people who feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and tend to the sick. Inspire us by their example, that we may see your presence in those in need around us. We pray especially for those on our prayer list, those in our hearts and minds, and those we now name on our lips. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.